Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're uh, diving into a book. Oh yeah. That's creating quite a stir. Okay. The Second Coming of Trump by Yosef yeah. Yomtov. Mm -hmm. Now, before you jump to any conclusion, yeah. this isn't your typical pro-Trump or right. anti-Trump book. Yomtov's take is way more nuanced. Yeah. And honestly, it's a fascinating read. What I find intriguing about Yomtov is that he kind of walks this line, you know? He supports Trump. Right. But he's not afraid to call him out on things. Yeah. He sees the good and the bad, the ups and downs of his presidency. Exactly. Like he doesn't shy away from the January 6th stuff at all. Yeah. And he uses that as an example yeah. of how some Trump supporters felt let down. They believed in his promises. Took line and sinker. And then felt abandoned. It's like, wait, what just happened? Right. Like they were left holding the bag. And you know what I appreciate about Yom Tov? What's that? He doesn't just tell you what to think. He encourages you to think critically to ask questions. Absolutely. And be an active participant, not just a passive consumer of all this information. Yes. He wants his readers to engage, to really grapple with the ideas. Yeah. Don't just accept what you're told, you know? Right. You've got to dig deeper, look for those hidden agendas. Which brings us to Yom Tov's uh, unique approach okay. to analyzing information. Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. He talks about looking for irregularities, like those little inconsistencies mm -hmm. or things that just don't quite add up. Yeah, those little details. As a way to uncover like hidden truths. And it's not just about what's said or done openly, you know. Yom Tov's really big on symbolism. Oh yeah, he goes there. He analyzes everything, political imagery, ancient emblems. Right. He's looking for the hidden messages, the things that might be encoded within them. Like there's this whole other layer of meaning. Exactly. He believes that symbols hold power. Yeah. That they can influence us. Subconsciously even. Yeah. Even if we're not consciously aware of it. It's like he's Indiana Jones and Sherlock Holmes rolled yeah. into one <laughs> trying to crack the code right. of, you know, politics. Absolutely. So how does all of this symbol decoding, this irregularity detective work, yeah. play into Gamtov's analysis of Trump's rise to power? Oh, man. This is where things get really interesting. Yamtov argues that Trump's journey, you know, from businessman to reality TV. It's quite a story. To a serious political contender wasn't some random fluke. He believes it was planned. You're kidding. Years in advance. Hold on, hold on. So you're telling me his cameos in movies like Home Alone 2, that whole you're fired thing on The Apprentice, all part of some master plan to make him president. That's what Yamtov suggests. Okay, now that's just wild. He even points to the 2011 White House Correspondents' Dinner as a turning point. Oh, man. Obama's roast of Trump. Exactly. Remember when Obama spent a good chunk of his speech just laying into Trump? It was brutal. I mean, how could <laughs> anyone forget that? Right. But Yamtov argues that it wasn't just for laughs. He sees it as a deliberate tactic to elevate Trump, give him legitimacy on the national stage. Wait, so he's saying that Obama, by making fun of Trump, was yeah. actually paving the way for him to become president. That's what Yamtov argues. He calls it predictive programming. Okay, I've never heard of that. It's like planting a seed in the public consciousness, making certain outcomes seem inevitable, you know? Oh, talk about a twisted political strategy. Right, but that's Yamtov for you. Yeah. He's always looking for the deeper meaning. Yeah. It really makes you think. And this is just the tip of the iceberg? His analysis of Trump's presidency goes way deeper than that. Oh, I bet. He doesn't hold back, does he? Not at all. Mm -hmm. This is where he dives headfirst into some seriously controversial territory. Like what? Give me the good stuff. We're talking about the deep state. Yeah, Yamtov argues there are these unseen forces, powerful people and institutions. Okay. Working behind the scenes to shape global events. Like puppet masters. Exactly. But who are these puppet masters? Who are we talking about here? That's the million dollar question, right? Right. Yomtov suggests it's a network, intelligence agencies, or big finance, global organizations, no. all working together. To maintain their power. To control the narrative. It's like something out of a movie. And one of their most powerful tools, media manipulation. Ooh, good point. Think about how often we hear about something right. and then later find out it was wrong or spun. All the time. It's like trying to grab onto water. Exactly. So how does this tie back to Trump? He wasn't exactly a stranger to using the media. True. But Yumtov argues that even Trump, with all his media savvy, right. was outmaneuvered by the deep state. Remember the constant negative press he got? Oh, yeah. Fake news, Russia, the whole nine yards. Yumtov suggests that was deliberate, an effort to discredit him, undermine him. So... 
control the narrative, control the world. Exactly. So are we just supposed to accept this, that these people are always in control? That's not at all. Yamtov believes knowledge is power. The more we understand their tactics, the yeah. better we can fight back. Knowledge is power. But Yamtov doesn't just talk in these big, broad strokes. He gets into some pretty specific examples. So yeah, he does. Like the Trump Clem thing. We've got to talk about that. Okay. For our listeners who might not remember, back in 2015, Trump made this comment about Heidi Klum, saying she wasn't a 10 anymore. Right. Just a tasteless remark. Well, it gets interesting because Klum responded with this video. Okay. And she's wearing a shirt with 9.99 on it. Okay, I get it. Sassy comeback. But what's the big deal? Yamchov reads a lot into that 9.99. He thinks it was a deliberate reference to 666. Hold on, hold on. You're saying that this whole thing, this was a staged event? That's what Yamtov suggested. To, to put satanic imagery out there? That's a little out there, even for Yamtov. It does sound crazy, but Yamtov sees patterns everywhere. And he points to other examples of Trump and people around him. Go. Using similar symbolism, almost like a coded language. A coded language, wow. He even analyzes what presidents wear to inaugurations. Really? Talking about the clothes, the rituals, yes, really... similarities across administrations. Yeah. He thinks these events, they're not just ceremonial. You're blowing my mind right now. You're saying it's all choreographed to keep up appearances. Yumtov suggests that the real power players, yeah, they never change. It's like a big show. Exactly. He even compares Trump's inauguration to this medieval carving in England. A carving. Okay, now you have to tell me more. So there's this grotesque figure, yeah. almost demonic looking, up on the wall of this old church. And Yamtov, he sees Trump in this figure. Not literally, okay. but symbolically. So like certain patterns, they just repeat throughout history. That's what Yamtov believes. Yes, He's so. urging us to pay attention to these patterns, these recurring things, because they might reveal what's really going on. It's kind of creepy when you think about it. It is. Like we're stuck in this echo chamber of the past. Okay, so where does Ivana Trump's death fit into all of this? Her death in 2022, officially an accident. Falling down the stairs. Right. That's another event that Yamtov spends a lot of time on. He just couldn't let that one go, could he? What didn't sit right with him? He brings up the speed of the autopsy. Okay. The lack of a toxicology report, the mm -hmm. fact that she was cremated so quickly, the burial site. On a golf course. Owned by Donald Trump. It's all very strange. He also mentions that Ivana's ex-husband, yeah. Rosano Rubicondi, right. he also died after falling down the stairs. No way. Seriously. That's too weird. Two people, both connected to Ivana, both dying from falls. You can't deny. That's a little strange. It's definitely eyebrow raising. Yamtov's not saying there's foul play, but he does think it raises a lot of questions. He's like that friend who always goes, but what if? Okay. So all this said, putting aside these individual examples, what's Yamtov's overall take on Trump's presidency? This is where it gets really fascinating. Mm. Because even with all the critiques, the deep state stuff, right. Yamtov still supports Trump. Really? So it's not a complete takedown? No. He acknowledges Trump's flaws, but he sees him as a break from the status quo. A challenge to the system. So a flawed hero kind of thing. In a way, yes. But he also warns against putting blind faith in any leader, even one who claims to be on your side. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer, right? And think critically about everything. Exactly. Something tells me that's going to be a recurring theme. Probably. But there's one thing that's been bugging me. Yontov talks about Trump challenging the system, but didn't Trump surround himself with a lot of establishment figures? That's a great point, and Yom Tov addresses it. He is especially critical of Trump's stance on the LGBTQ community. Yeah, that seemed to rub some people the wrong way. Exactly. Yom Tov argues that Trump's willingness to accept certain parts of the LGBTQ agenda, like transgender routes, went against what a lot of his voters believed in. So it's like even when he was trying to break the mold, he was still playing by some of the rules. That's what Yom Tov suggests. And he sees it as evidence of the deep state's influence. Like they were able to keep him in check. Exactly. Keeping him on a leash. It's a pretty bleak picture, but it's also kind of exciting, right? Like if we can learn to see these agendas, maybe we can actually do something about it. Exactly. And that's Yom Top's whole point. He's not trying to scare us. Right. He's trying to give us the tools to understand what's happening. Like he's saying, OK, here's a flashlight. Now go explore. I and mean, who knows what we might discover. So we've talked about Yamtov's take on Trump, yeah. the deep state, all these crazy examples. Right. But before we wrap up, sure. does Yamtov offer any solutions? Or are we just stuck in this system? Yamtov's not about doom and gloom. 
He believes that knowledge is power and that understanding the tactics of those in control is how we break free. Mm. One thing he talks about is controlled opposition. That's one of those terms I hear a lot, right. but I'm not sure I totally get it. So imagine someone who seems like they're fighting the system. Okay. Someone who's speaking truth to power. Right. But in reality, they're being used by the system to control the narrative. So they're like a distraction to keep people from focusing on the real issues. Exactly. Wow. Yamtov suggests that figures like Alex Jones, yeah. who some see as this hero, exposing conspiracies, right. might actually be part of this controlled opposition. You're saying these people are almost like plants to discredit genuine concerns. It's possible. So it's all a big smoke screen. In a way. But how do we see through it? Critical thinking. We have to question everything, especially things that seem to confirm what we already believe. That's tough these days. There's so much information out there. It is, but Yamtov reminds us that we're not powerless. We have a choice in what we consume. So it's not about blindly following anyone. Right. It's about thinking for yourself. Yamtov's book is a real call to action. Absolutely. He wants us to wake up and do something. Don't just sit there. Right. Make a difference. Exactly. So if we had to sum up Yamtov's message, yeah. what would it be? What do you want our listeners to walk away with? Question everything. Question everything. Especially when it comes to politics. Right. Don't be afraid to look behind the curtain. You might be surprised by what you find. And maybe even a little empowered. Well, that's the second coming of Trump. Part political analysis. Part conspiracy what? thriller. And 100% thought-provoking. It really makes you think. And isn't that what a good deep dive is all about? We want to hear from you. Have you read The Second Coming of Trump? Head over to our social media and let us know. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Until next time, stay curious.